in honor of remembering those who have fought for us and everything, let us, let us stand and sing the fourth verse of 645, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. In the glory in his bosom, that transfigures you and me. As he died to make me holy, let us live to make me free. While God is marching on, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. Amen. Amen. Our God is marching on. Do you believe that today? Amen. Say amen. amen. Well, I welcome you all here today in-house and also those of you uh, watching online. We're so thankful that you've uh, chosen uh, to worship the Lord today on His day and with His people. And if you are a first-time guest here, we are very blessed that you have chosen to uh, worship with us today. And we do pray that you are blessed in a wonderful way. If you are a first-time guest, either in-house or online, uh, if you're online and, or if you're in-house and would like to, you can just text the word WELCOME to 859-986-3444. We would love to connect with you. And then also, uh, those of you in-house today, there's a little tear-off section on your bulletin. You can uh, feel just some uh, little information how we can connect with you, whether it be by e uh, email or text or... Um, either by sending you a nice packet in the mail. Again, we would love just to let you know how wonderful it was uh, for you to be with us today. And we encourage you to tear that off, and you can just put that in the offering plate as it passes by today. Uh, I want to remind everybody that tonight, uh, in-house only, uh, we might release some throughout the week. We'll just see how it goes tonight with the recording. But we're looking forward to having the Old Elkhorn Pickers Club and they'll be here tonight for our Sunday evening service, and that begins at 6.30 p.m. So I do hope that you'll make a special attempt to uh, come back out tonight and to have a good time and worship the Lord in this way and enjoy uh, the Old Elkhorn Pickers Club. Uh, bring a friend, bring two, bring three, bring an enemy, but just be back tonight. And we will be taking up uh, just a love offering for them, for them spending time to, to travel a little bit and come be with us tonight and bless our hearts and to bless the Lord. Well, this week, uh, November the 11th, coming up is Veterans Day. It's a day when we recognize and give thanks for the service and sacrifice of the men and women who are living and have served in the armed forces. Memorial Day is when we remember those who have gone on. But Veterans Day is a day that we remember those who are still living. These men and women and their families and your hardship, separation, and sometimes loss for the sake of protecting our country and fighting for freedom. And mind you, not only within our shores, but also around the world. Sometimes we forget, but our service men and women have also worked to assist and build up communities and suffering populations around the world after the conflict. You know, uh, we'd love if your services had not been necessary. We would love that. We would love to live in a world with no threat and only peace at all times. But we do not live in that world. And because the world that we live in is one of conflict, we must have people willing to take up arms and to protect and defend not only our country, but others that are in harm's way. In the world in which we live, we must remember that levels of peace and safety uh, do not come necessarily mostly by joining hands and singing, Give Peace a Chance. 
doesn't work like that with most people and some people in the world. Levels of peace and safety that we enjoy today actually come from strength, from preparation, and people that are willing to set themselves aside to protect that level of peace. So today we honor their commitment to duty and we are thankful for their willingness to sacrifice themselves so that the rest of us can go about our days with a level of security and protection. We also need to remember, as we think about our veterans, that these brave men and women that have served are only human. Even the strongest and the bravest of human heroes stand in need of God's grace, and they also stand in need of the help of their fellow countrymen. So many need not only to be thanked and honored, but they also need help and healing when they come home. And so today we honor those who have served as being blessings from God upon our lives. And we pray for our veterans because, again, they need our prayers and they need our support in a number of ways when they come back to civilian life. I'm going to ask at this time if you served in our armed forces in any way, if you would please stand and let us honor you for your service this morning. Please stand. Amen. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you know better than any that when we fail from righteousness, losing our innocence, mankind has been in conflict and war. Lord, we look forward with faith to the day when your kingdom comes and peace reigns under your kingship. But until that day, Lord, we're thankful for those who have served to defend our nation and also other nations around the world. We thank you, Lord, for giving them the courage, and we thank you, Lord, for their heroism as they have faced the enemy in battle and in many different ways. We praise their selfless acts on behalf of fellow soldiers. And I ask, Lord, that you would bless them today and give them peace and meet their needs and, Lord, that you would give our nation and its leaders wisdom that we will also work to care for our veterans. We remember especially all who are presently serving in the armed forces of this and other countries, and we pray for their continued safety and welfare. As they encounter danger, even right now, give them the insight to understand life and death. We pray for them to be at peace with you through Jesus Christ and to find peace within themselves. Bless the families of all who serve in the armed forces, O oh Lord, and let your Holy Spirit cover them like a blanket and preserve them from anxiety and harm. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to remember the way life itself is a struggle between good and evil. And Lord, help us to prepare to defend the good and also, Lord, with your help, protect us and don't let us be consumed by the evil that we encounter. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all of his children said today, Amen.
skip on that CD on us so but uh, I'm just glad to be in the house Lord with you it's good to be in here on Sunday morning isn't it if we will start with our first hymn today the words come from Romans 11 13 it says how unsearchable his judgments and how untraceable his ways it is to the tune of uh, our God from ages past it is God moves in mysterious ways it is 664 in your hymnals if you will stand over our next hymn if you will it is he will hold me fast i'll sing to the first one it is the modern tune that the gators had done and then if you will join join me on that second and third verse uh, we'll start with it when i fear my faith will Yeah. 
Lord, we thank you that you hold us in your righteous right hand and we are safe and secure in it. Help us, O oh Lord, to find our confidence in you today in your glory and your power. And God, as we come to a time when we worship you through giving of our tithes and offerings, I pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless the one giving with joy and faith. And Lord, that you would take our offering and give us wisdom to use it, Lord, for your glory and for the building up of your kingdom. Help us today through this offering, O Lord, to lift high the name of Jesus so that you will draw people unto yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over. Yeah. 
that there's no sickness, toil, nor danger in that bright land to which I go. And I'm going there to see my daddy. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. I know dark clouds. Golden fields lie just before. I know my way is rough and steep, where weary eyes shall no more weep. And I'm going there. Mama and all my loved ones who've gone before. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going. soon be free from every trial my body will rest beneath the side I'll drop the cross of self-denial and enter in Shed for us his precious blood. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. I'm only going. Well, how many of you all here today would really like to know all the reasons and have some good explanations as to all the things that have happened in our lives over the last two years? We want answers. Today we speak of having confidence even when you don't know all the answers. Looking at that, we're going to be looking again into Abraham, or at this point, Abram's life. And I'm going to be reading this morning from Genesis and chapter 15, and we'll read verses 1 through 6 of that chapter. If you're physically able, I would invite you to stand with me as we read from God's Word. And the Bible says in Genesis 15, beginning in verse 1, After these events... The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? Abraham continued, Look, you have given me no offspring, 
so a slave born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him. This one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He, being God, took him outside and said, Look at the sky and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And then he said to him, Your offspring will be that numerous. Abraham believed the Lord. And he, being God, credited it to him, Abraham, as righteousness. To God be the glory. You may be seated. Let's be honest this morning. We at least think that we feel better in life when we have answers. Whether we're at the doctor's office or the mechanic's shop, we uh, having answers puts us to some degree of ease or maybe control that we can at least, no matter what the prognosis is, feel more confident with a game plan in moving forward. In many situations, I want to say this, it is not wrong and it is actually correct behavior to stop and to ask questions, to think through, uh, to seek advice and to try to come up with a plan. There's much biblical support for treating many circumstances in life in this manner. But there are the more disturbing things that happen in our lives, things in which it is much more complicated to arrive at satisfying answers. Can we have confidence in our lives when these events shake us to our core and there seems to be no satisfying answer to what is happening to us? When there's no earthly rational explanation, can you and I today keep moving forward in life with confidence? Well, let me say that even in these weightier issues of life, of death, of success, of tragedy, of failure, you, you can hear many answers. It's not hard to find an answer to a question. But the problem with answers from mankind is this, that many times, even though we hear what we think would be a good answer, we still can't say with 100% accuracy if the answer that we are receiving is right. Remember, someone can give you a quick answer. A lot of people are really good at that. It might even sound intelligent and logical, but that doesn't mean that it's the right answer. A lot of people will give you advice of your situation, but they've not walked in your shoes. And even if they've gone through something similar to you, it's still not in your context. In fact, for me personally, I'll be honest with you, I've become very leery and weary of the person that always has an answer or a comment for everything in the world. Have we ever lived in such a time where we're sure of so little and yet somehow have an answer for everything? It's not hard to find an answer. But to add to that desire for answers, we not only expect an answer to the problem, but we also want a good explanation as to why this problem or this crisis began in the first place in our lives. Again, this is my personal belief. I, I personally believe that we don't know nearly as much as we think we know about circumstances happening in our life and in our world and why are they happening. We know a lot less than we even think we know. We have mounds of theories, mounds of uh, possibilities, of guesses, of hypotheses but many times and more than we would like to admit we just never know why certain things happen 
and why those certain things are even happening in our lives right now. In Genesis in chapter 11 and 12, we were introduced to a man named Abram, or who would become Abraham, and we were also introduced to his wife Sarah. Abram was asked by God to go to a land that God had promised to him and his future generations. Abraham's main problem was this, that Sarah and Abram could not have children, and they were now well up in years and well past the years of bearing children. Several years had passed by now from chapters 11 and 12 and now to 15, uh, and now we arrive to chapter 15. And I want you to remember, as several years have passed, none of these promises had visibly revealed themselves or had taken place. And, and Abraham, as we just read, had some genuine concerns about where he was in life at this point. He had left home and family, security, to go to this land, and nothing seemed to be happening. Abram felt that he needed some answers from God to have confidence to continue in what God had called him away from his home to accomplish now several years before. Again, look at chapter 15 and verse 1. And notice it begins with, after these events. After these events. What were these events? Well, you see in chapter 14, and we're not going to read that, but you can go back and look at it, that in chapter 14... Uh, in very Reader's Digest version, young people don't know what Reader's Digest is, sorry. I just, but Abraham had, had gathered to his people, had gathered his people together and to go and rescue his nephew Lot from these three kings that had come together to attack Sodom, where Lot was living. And in chapter 14, we see where Abraham was successful in going against these three kings that had joined their armies. Abraham was successful in defeating the kings. He was successful in bringing back all the goods that were taken by them. He was successful in bringing his nephew Lot back, Lot's possessions, as well as the other men and women that had been captured. And so to say that life had been a little stressful and emotional for Abraham would be an understatement. Abraham might have still had concerns that uh, these people might regroup with re revenge and come after him. And this is why it says in, in chapter 15, 1, After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid. Abram, I am your shield. Your reward will be great. In any case, Abraham might have been thinking, Lord, I didn't travel all this way to fight battles for other people. And I, I thought that you had a different plan that you shared with me now several years before, and I'm not seeing any of this happening. And we too have found ourselves in situations thinking, uh, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't ask for this to happen. You see, God had made an unconditional covenant with Abraham. Some in the Bible were conditional. This was an unconditional covenant with Abraham, an agreement that God had made a promise to Abraham before he came to this land. And again, I just remind you, to put yourself in Abraham's place, it didn't seem that anything was happening as some years had gone by now. And we too have felt like this at points in our life, have we not? In verse 2 it says, But Abram said, he answers the Lord, Lord God, what can you give me since I'm child, childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus who was a slave born in his home. Abram desired to have some answers from God. We have too. We too desire answers and especially especially those of 
us who have called upon the name of the Lord, who have surrendered our lives to Him. And we are trying to hold fast to the promises of God. And yet, there are times and seasons and sometimes years that pass where we're not really seeing the active hand of God in our life. Here was God's reply at the beginning in chapter 15 and verse 3. Abram continued, Look, you have given me no offspring again, so a slave born in my house will be my heir. And then in verses 4 and 5, we see that God did assure Abraham that the servant of his house would not be his heir, but that his heir would come physically from he and Sarah. But other than that, God just brought him back to the promise that he had made to him several years before. And then he took him outside, it says. And he used the stars as an illustration to show how many people would come from his life of faith and trust in God. I bet Abraham never looked at the stars the same again. Now, at that point, Abraham had a decision to make like we also have here even today. And each day, and especially at these pivotal points in our life, what will we do with the Word of the Lord? What will we do with the promises of God even when our life seems chaotic, when it seems broken, or when it seems that God isn't doing anything for or within our lives. And we read in verse 6 of what Abraham at that point chose to do. And it says in verse 6, Abram believed the Lord, and he, God, credited it to him, Abraham, as righteousness. You see, Abraham, of his own free will, made a choice to believe the Lord without, get this, without having all the answers. And without having an outline explaining how everything was going to happen. At that point of what we read in verse 6, Abraham chose to put confidence in God and in His promises and not in, the, or in any explanation that he thought might give him peace of mind. I've read this quote before and it just came back to my mind as I was preparing this week of what Dr. Warren Wiersbe said People live by promises, not by explanations. You know, that's really too, true even for unbelievers. They wouldn't admit to that, but it is true. Again, no one in life can answer all of life's questions, right? Again, like we said, some people think they can. No one can. And I want to encourage you today, and young people as well, that God isn't waiting for you at the end of some philosophical road for you when you figure out all things about your life. You see, He's waiting for you to put your faith and trust in Him now and each day of your life. And, and listen, what if you are the person who demands answers and the person who likes to debate all of the questions of life logically. I, I want to ask you, does winning a debate or an argument, and don't punch your wives or your husbands next to you, but does winning a debate or an argument really help you in being at peace with others and yourself? And can I remind some of you, you're not going to win an argument on Facebook Please quit trying. Does having your answer to the problem that you so highly prize really remove, think about this, 
does it really remove any suffering and pain from the heartbreaks in your life? You see, God could tell us why he appointed certain things to happen or why he allowed challenges in your life. But really, if you think about this, even if God did that, would that really remove the sorrow and pain? Absolutely not. Years ago, as a young man, I started experiencing panic attacks. I didn't know what it was. Some time later, I found out what it was. But you know what? Even though I can say when it starts to happen, that's a panic attack. It still stinks. It, it's still no fun. So even if we knew all the answers, it still doesn't always take away the pain and suffering. Here we see that Abraham chose to believe God. That is what we must also do each day of our lives. You see, here's the point. If we had all the answers, we wouldn't walk by faith. Trust me, again, in every area of life, listen to this, in every area of life, if you really sit down and think through this, people, again, even unbelievers, use an element of faith in what they're doing every day, whether they are conscious of it or not. Uh, they use a measure of faith in relationships, in marriages, in business dealings, in science, in medical treatment, and, and even other decisions in their ordinary daily lives. People use a degree of faith, whether they believe in God or not. Everyone is using an amount of faith in someone or something every day of their lives. So the question in life really isn't this, am I going to believe in certain promises or in certain guarantees or in certain principles? That's really not the question. That question's out the window because everybody, to some degree, saved or lost, born again or dead in their spirit, Believer, unbeliever, every person is putting some degree of faith in promises of someone uh, or guarantees that are made to them and principles of life. That's not the question. That is not the question because every man and woman already does that whether, again, they're conscious of it or not. The real question is this. The question isn't if I'm going to use faith in something or someone or some things. The question is this, am I going to believe in the Lord, in His promises, and find my confidence for life in Him even when I don't know and understand what God is doing in my life at every particular moment? That's the question. Abraham's faith had wavered and it would have its moments of frailty again but you know what at this moment that we read in in verse 6 Abram believed the Lord at that moment and for the greater part of Abraham's life for the rest of his life his faith was a burning torch and really it's a torch that is still burning today a faith and belief in the Lord God, not in the answers and explanations. And not only did he believe God's words to him, listen to the difference here, not only did he believe God's words to him, Abraham believed in the person of God. He trusted God with his life, and Abraham, it says in verse 6, was he was entered into heaven's record as righteousness. His faith in God's redemption brought about his righteousness before God. Abraham saw his body as being dead and unable to fulfill what God 
had said would happen as far as he and Sarah having a child, and it was. However, Abraham chose to believe that God could do what was impossible for man to achieve. Do you believe that today? That God is able to do what is impossible for man to achieve. That's what Abraham believed. And you know, that's what real faith does. It believes in God. It believes in His Word. Faith believes that God can do what man is unable to do. Uh, that, that is living with faith and trust in God for each area of our lives. This is really what it means to live with confidence each new day. It changes the way that we live. And this is what it means to live by God's promises and not just by the answer or the explanation. This is what it means for a believer, again, not to believe or have all the answers to the mysteries of life, but to daily walk with the answer, Jesus Christ. That's the difference. That's faith. To have an answer or to walk with the answer? Jesus himself by faith. Because Jesus Christ ultimately is the answer to all of our questions and problems. He is our confidence, our salvation in this life. Let me say again, it's not hard to find an answer or an explanation by someone in life about what you're going through. Again, just put it on social media. You'll be flooded. But again, I remind you, especially young people today, just because you get a lot of answers doesn't mean that it's the right answer. And it doesn't mean that it's the correct explanation. Will you really believe in man above believing in God? And that's the question that we're faced with not only today, but each day of our lives. Who are you going to put your confidence in? Who are you going to trust? This faith and God is also the faith used when we experience salvation. When we know that we are sinners and that we're unable to save ourselves and to make ourselves fit for heaven, and we believe in the promised Son of God, Jesus Christ, for our righteousness. We're believing that God is able to do what we cannot do. A lot of people haven't figured that out yet. They still think, through their life, they have life in their control and they can change their eternal destiny in their own power. That's not what real salvation is. Real salvation is just like Abraham considered his body as being dead and too old and unable to achieve what God had promised him as an heir to come from he and Sarah. He knew that, but he believed that God was able to do what he couldn't and God did, it's the same with our salvation. When we realize we're dead in our sins and trespasses, unable to redeem ourselves, not unable to appear righteous enough to enter into heaven. And then we look to the cross. And we look to the Christ that came and cleanses us under the flow of Calvary. It's accounted for our righteousness as well. And if you believe in Him today and trust in what He did for you today, I, I want to assure you, Christian, today that your faith too will be accounted as righteousness in the Lamb's book of life that is in heaven. It's the same faith.
And what about you, beloved Christian? Is, is your faith wavering today? Hear me. You're putting faith in some things and some people. But is your faith in God wavering today? Would you again today, at, at this very moment, renew your hope and renew your trust and renew your faith in God? Will you do so even, listen, even while things in your life might hurt and not make sense to you? This is what Abraham did. It's what we're called to do today. This is what it means to live by faith and not by sight. I close with this as we begin to prepare our hearts for the end of this service. Today in Matthew chapter 9 and 29, don't try to turn there, just listen to me please. In Matthew 9 and verse 29, the story is telling of a time when two blind men heard that Jesus was near and they were calling out to Jesus for healing. And Jesus asked them this question, do you believe that I can do this? Listen to me very clearly this morning. Jesus asked these two blind men that asked for him to heal them of their blindness, and he asked them, do you believe that I can do this? And they answered, yes, Lord. And then Jesus made this statement after he touched their eyes. Let it be done for you, or let it happen according to your faith. Let it happen to you according to your faith. Will you believe that God can do what He said that He will do in your life? That's what it boils down to. And today, will you believe in God? Not just in a book, not just in a promise, but will you believe in, in the author of this book, God? Will you trust Him not only with your soul, but listen, will you also trust Him with your life? Even when things are impossible, impossible for you to accomplish. Beloved, that's really where faith begins. Well, I use Jesus' words, let it be done to you, me, each one of you, let it be done to you today according to your faith. And I, I really believe with all of my heart that if you will trust God with your life, He will in His time and in His way turn all your question marks into explanation points. Who will you believe today? That is the choice we all have right now. Let's pray. Father, help us to trust you And be with that one that is weak in their faith right now, oh God. And may your grace be upon that one to surrender their life to you today. For the poor wayfaring stranger today, Lord, the, the poor Christian traveling through a world that doesn't understand them and they really don't belong here, Lord, would you help them in their journey. And would you give them strength, O oh God, to keep traveling on to greater things that you've prepared for us. Thank you, O oh God, that you are our shield and that you are our strength. Move Holy Spirit in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. The altar will be open as we stand together and sing our hymn of invitation, 
you are free to come and to pray. I'm here to help you with any decision, public decision, that you might feel led of the Holy Spirit to make today. But otherwise, let us all resolve to trust in the Lord as we stand and as we sing.